The album had controversy around it. It was very vexed going to South Africa at that time. When Paul Simon was in South Africa in 1985, it was at a moment of high struggle. We saw Paul Simon come in as a threat, and we saw it as an issue. And you've just seen a clip from Under African Skies, which I could tell you what it's about, but I have people who know what it's about much better than anybody else in the world. The director, Joe Berlinger, and Paul Simon, they, you're in it, aren't you? You're just something to do with you. Quite a bit, although <laughs> some, some of it is barely recognizably me. Well, I think it's all recognizably you, but it's set up as we're looking at Graceland. Yeah, I just said when that. it happened, and you just so, said, it's yeah. it. Yeah, you just said that. So it's opening just, remark. Mark, just feeling around. It's nothing, you know, yeah. And then it's a concert that happened 25 years after in South Africa. So what prompted it besides the fact that Graceland was 25 years old? Really, that's, that was what prompted it. Well, then we're done here. <laughs> it was great talking to you. <laughs> really, I enjoyed it so much. Really, seriously, besides that, because I've seen this movie and it's a wonderful thing to watch and to listen to. Besides that, there are some issues in this movie, issues about how it was first received and how it's looked on now. So when did you two connect? Well, uh, Sony uh, realized it's the 25th anniversary, so they talked to Paul about maybe doing a movie. Paul and I had done this episode of Iconoclast together, that we, a TV show we do on the mm -hmm. Sundance channel. So Paul, my name got thrown together. Paul and I met and talked about you know, what kind of film it could be. And yeah, I was ha happy for the opportunity to uh, document uh, the, the, how the record was made and even to go back and talk about, uh, you know, what was controversial at the time, but which has since sort of, I think most people would probably be unaware of the fact that there was the, 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 that, that controversy. But, but f in my career or the way I think about my career, Graceland is, probably the peak of it. So uh, I, I, I really embraced the idea of, of doing uh, something that com commemorated the 25th anniversary. And it's a terrible thing to say. I think you're totally wrong about people not knowing or caring. I just think what happened at that time breaking the United Nations boycott and going to South Africa. Uh, I was unaware of it when I went there. Uh, and by the time the album came out, which was almost two years after I went there... It's 1985, this is the, right? Yeah. I went in 85, mm -hmm. the album came out at the, at the end of 86, in the fall of 86. We see in the movie, though, we see and hear about you calling Harry Belafonte. Well, Harry's, it's an, as if Harry's Harry, an old friend. Right, right. Yeah. And I, did call, I did call mm -hmm. uh, Harry before I went mm -hmm. and ask, to ask his advice about about what to do. And this is all because he's saying you should check with the Congress. With the Afri African, Na African National Congress. Congress yeah. But I was in contact with, um, with um, a producer in South Africa, a record producer named Hilton Rosenthal. And he uh, was um, dealing with uh, the S Black South Africans Music mm -hmm. Musicians Union. And they, held a, they had a vote, a secret vote, I didn't know about it, about whether they wanted me to come or not. And they voted that they wanted me to come. So as far as I knew, I was a welcome musician. And, uh, and in fact, I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for whoever, wherever the objections came from, they didn't come till quite a, quite a long period of time uh, afterwards. And when they did come, uh, really what happened was the musicians and, and I said, you know, wait a minute, you made up a bunch of rules and some of these rules are actually of no benefit to the people that you would like to be helping. And I was asked to perform in South Africa, I refused to perform there in Sun City. Mm -hmm. uh, because essentially you'd be performing in a, in a segregated environment and you would be uh, tacitly supporting the regime. So I, I, I had turned that down a couple of years before, before this. But when, when, a, when a boycott says, boycotts the, the very culture that you're looking to preserve, 
from, uh, from the attack uh, of, of apartheid, then it's, it's nearsighted and, uh, and it doesn't serve. And that is how the ar argument evolved with the musicians playing with me and the musicians touring with me, particularly Miriam Akeba, Hugh Masekela, mm -hmm. Lady Smith Black Mombazo, saying, this is, uh, you're victimizing the victim mm -hmm. twice. We're, we're victimized at home, and now you're saying that we can't go out and play our music in the world. And that was the, poli that was the political argument. There was no argument about the music. And With the musicians it. and you? Yes. Yeah. But the, my question was, and, and the question of all the musicians was, just to what degree does, do politics and political parties tell artists what they're supposed to do? You have a situation where a political party, and as, uh, as admirable as the, that, that party was at the time, the ANC, in effect, it was still just a political party. I mean, if you act the way you're acting, you're a dictatorship. And that's where the fight was. Because the world embraced Graceland and the tour of Graceland mm -hmm. and saw it as a representation of the culture and the individual artistry and the suffering of black South Africans. So it was making a case against the apartheid movement that was a very powerful case, although it was not an overtly political case. But Graceland was also saying, and these people who are enslaved are the people that you see on the stage. And this is what's in their hearts. This is, this is what the culture is. Mm -hmm. These are not just some imaginary masses of people. These are real, real people. And you can now identify with it, and I, and I think that's what happened. Can somebody go and steal a culture? I mean, there were people who said then, well, you just went there and stole this.